This meeting is being recorded. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our artist talk today with the students from Truman College and their current exhibition here at the Haitian American Museum of Chicago, The Outside In. Um, this is a part of our temporary exhibition space here at the museum that we rotate every quarter. And we've been doing a collaboration with Truman College since, well, forever and ever, it, it really feels like. Um, and we're really happy to be back in person after um, one year of canceling the exhibit, one year of going virtual, which I, I will say myself, you know, Stephanie, we did, a, I think, a fabulous job. Um, so kudos to, to Truman and Stephanie for that. Um, but this is a part of our temporary exhibition space. We're really happy that you all can join us today. My name is Carlos Bossard, and I'm the executive director of the museum. Um, it is great to see you. Uh, good morning. Hammock's mission is to promote and preserve Haitian art, culture, history, and community in Chicago and beyond. Education is at the core of our mission, and we are glad to continue bringing insightful, meaningful, and impactful lectures and programs to the community. Before we begin, I would like to do a little bit of housekeeping and let you all, the, let you all know the format of uh, today's event. Um, so first, this program is being recorded. If you do not wish to be seen, please feel free to turn off your video cameras now. We will make this recording available on Hammock's YouTube page. Um, and there you can check out past lectures and programs um, from this year and last. Also, everyone was automatically put on mute as you entered the room. Um, please remain on mute um, as we ask questions to the artists. Um, artists, uh, as we go through the exhibition and go through your work, um, please feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, or if you'd like to use the chat feature, whichever, whichever really works. Um, but we're really excited to be speaking with, all, with you all here today. Auto-generated captioning has been turned on for accessibility. We're happy this worked. Um, thank you all for your patience on getting that, but we wanna make sure that we do it right the first time. And if anyone would like uh, the transcript after, please feel free to request that. We are more than happy to make that happen. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce um, Ms. Stephanie Roberts. Um, Stephanie, uh, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for being a part of this exhibition. Um, and really, we're, we're excited to have you back in the space, um, have the artist back in the, in the actual physical space. Um, so please uh, tell us about the exhibition, um, the idea behind it, and a little bit about uh, your classroom. Sure. Well, thank you, first of all, Carlos, for being our host today. We want to also extend our gratitude to the museum in general. This is a... Uh, a relationship that benefits us as well. So it's really nice to have student work, not, not just featured on campus, but to allow these outside of campus opportunities for, for students. So it's really meaningful for us. So this class or this combination of classes, actually three different sections of painting and drawing courses have come together for this exhibition. So we have a watercolor, section. We have an oil painting section. And then we also have a, an advanced drawing section. So each of these courses have some representation in the exhibition. Some of them are in person. So we have a few students who have met with me consistently over the course of the semester on campus and have been making the work, you know, in person. So that is, that is combined actually with a digital representation of the students who are remote this semester. And so the watercolor section has, has been working remotely, independently at home, but they've also been engaged in hands-on materials. So even though their representation is in a digital format in the, in the slideshow representation, we are really excited that the traditions of handmade work continue, even if the students are accessing that material digitally and remotely. So it's an exciting kind of combination of the digital slideshow video that you're hosting for us there and running all day long at the museum, <laughs> as well as the, um, the physical artwork. So, we have some oil paintings as well as some watercolors that are that are hanging on the actual walls of the museum right now. 
And, and then we have, of course, the digital slideshow running as well. So a couple of different ways to engage with the student work from Truman. So I, that would be my intro. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. And yes, the, the music is an additive layer. And that's something that we're really excited about, um, you know, kind of breaking that traditional museum mold. And so I'm really happy that we have kind of the, the traditional paintings and kind of those traditional mediums. We have that digital aspect to it. And we have that additive, you know, auditory aspect to it as well. I think all pulled together um, it makes sense. And uh, it's, it's an extremely amazing exhibition. Um, and right now, I would like to actually give everyone a virtual tour um, of the space. And so I've done this a couple times already kind of uh, during the past year. So I haven't mastered this yet, but I'm going to switch now over to my phone, um, which I will use as I uh, go through the space. So give me about uh, 10 seconds of, oh, Yes. Did you have a, a, a I have a question? Yeah, for sure. I still I still see you in the little square on top, but mm -hmm. on my screen I have this great big this meeting is being recorded. And when I keep pressing on got it, mm -hmm. it doesn't go off. So I may not be able to see the photos as well on the phone. That's all. It you, won't accept my got it to get the message off my screen. I think but go thing, ahead. I just wanted you to know. One <laughs> thing you can do, Yordanka, is for the little screen that you see that's labeled hammock, H-A-M-O-C, with Carlos in it, if you click on his little frame, there's a little three button thing there. And I think you can tell you can tell your computer to spotlight him. Do you have okay. that option? Okay, um, I don't wanna hold you guys up. Go ahead. I mean, I still see up there, yeah. go ahead. So you can, you can pin it. him. So if you, if you go up to your, that little frame where Carlos is, you click on his frame and then click the three little dots and then you can pin him as your major screen. Okay, well, I'm trying to, but please go ahead. Sure. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, no, I definitely want to make sure again that we, we get things right the first time. And so uh, definitely keep on trying to hit that got it button. I may be, it's just not, um, not like sensing the finger or something, um, you know, and then, yeah, like Stephanie mentioned, you can spotlight me. Um, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear me. And then when we get and get into that next portion, um, we can always uh, go back and look at some of the images again. Um, we'll make this recording available. I'm sure I'll be fine. I, I'm sorry to push this back. I'm okay. I just got my computer a week ago. Oh, that's so. fun though. That's that's a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, everyone, let me switch over to my phone and we'll go ahead with our virtual tour. All right, well, <laughs> here we are. Can everyone, uh, see, well, I guess it's looking at me right now. Let me switch it uh, to the exhibition itself. Perfect, all right. Can everyone uh, see kind of what's going on here? Yes. yes, and if everyone if everyone sees the sees the little video that he's taking, you can click on that, and then you can pull down the little three dot blue button to replace pin, and then that pins him as your primary screen. So it makes it a little easier to see. Awesome. Well, I am really excited to be talking about this exhibition today. Um, again, this is half of Hammock Space. We call ourselves Small and Mighty, um, take up less than 500 square feet. So this is literally half of it. 
Um, so this is kind of just a big picture view of our temporary exhibit space. Um, a little bit of history behind the space. So historically, this is a place for new and upcoming Haitian, Haitian American and Chicago artists to showcase their work. Um, we're really happy to be a platform for local artists here in the city of Chicago um, and give them an opportunity to really showcase uh, their talents. Um, and again, a lot of the time it's exhibiting for the first time in their artistic career. Um, and so with Truman, we've been doing a collaboration, like I said, for, for many, many years. Um, two years ago, we had to cancel. Last year, we had uh, virtual. Um, and this year, we're doing in-person again. We're really happy to, to be back. So again, just another quick uh, view of the exhibition before we go into a little bit more detail on uh, what's happening here in this space. So start at uh, the front. Um, and this is actually one of the three kind of sets that we have here physically uh, in the museum uh, for the, for the in-person work. Um, and this is actually by uh, Ms. Jordanka, um, and who is here. And thank you uh, so much for, for being here. And these pieces are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm really interested uh, to learn more about them here in a little bit, just you know, talking to you. Uh, but these are, these are absolutely fabulous. Well, thank you for the compliment. Um, I am in awe as to the water and sky, looking at it from my balcony. I face Michigan, uh, Lake Michigan, and I love the colors. Every single day is different. Uh, the, the one that you're showing right now, it, I, I can't describe to you how exciting it was mm -hmm. to see the sun in the upper right hand corner and the reflection coming down into the water. Uh, Stephanie is wonderful in helping me with reflections. Uh, I've been studying with Stephanie now at least, I would think eight years, Stephanie, maybe even a little longer. Sounds and right. I still look forward to going in every single day. I just wish my two classes a week, I'm doing only one right now. So it's studying color water reflection. And last semester, I did only rocks in the water. But this semester, I'm really doing a lot of the paintings of just sky and the water. Yeah, these are these are fabulous. And it's it's so cool to hear kind of the story behind it. Lake Michigan, where you live, these are things that you've seen. Um, fabulous. Great work. This second set. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say this one was done from a photo. Uh, we have to work from photos in the studio, but I try to work with a lot of my photos in the studio, but this was one I picked up. Yeah, this is so, it's, it's, I love just the motion, the motion that's in here, the, how realistic it really is compared to how natural, you know, water moves and how natural the clouds are. Um, and, and the color palette that you use for this one too, I think is, is very striking to me. It's very, you know, powerful, um, even being very cool blues as well. So I, I love that one as well. The next section of, of images or rather paintings that we have in the physical space here in the museum um, are by uh, Miss Maria Gonzalez. Um, I'm not sure if, if she is here with us in the room at all and wanted to say anything about um, her work. Maria is actually traveling this week, so she is not with us today, but was excited to have her work shown. Yeah. 
glad. Yeah, Maria's work is is fabulous. And again, just the, the different styles here that are represented at the museum, um, it really speaks about, I think to me, kind of the intersectionality and diversity um, that we like to highlight at the museum, especially, you know, Haitian culture. There's so many different aspects of it. Um, that vary from region to region. I think this does a great job kind of pulling together, again, that diversity of styles of artwork. Very nice colors that Maria has put together. And right below here, as you may be uh, hearing, uh, is the digital piece um, of the exhibition. And we will look at this together here in just a little bit, um, but some more images rather paintings, we have some drawings. Um, and if you can hear it, I'll get a little bit closer. You can hear um, some music coming out of there. And uh, we'll talk about that piece as well and the significance um, behind uh, that creation in a second too. So very, very nice piece. And you know, it sits here at the museum on, on this table, um, adding that layer of, of auditory um, and some really great work that I'm excited to look over to that plays in the background. The last portion of the in-person exhibition um, is by, uh, I apologize, I'm not, I'm not really good with pronouncing names, um, Ms. Tina Falgovich. Um, I'm not sure if, if Tina is with us at all this morning. She is not with us either. She's not as much a computer person, but she uh, <laughs> she uh, she does amazing watercolors. Yeah, yeah, these are fabulous, and we will make sure to get the video recording over to Tina, um, so she can see the again the beautiful paintings um, that she has brought to the physical space here at the museum. And again, an, a, another kind of diverse, specific style. Um, that is represented here in the space. I'm trying to get some close-ups because, you know, I, I, you know, and I invite you all to please come visit the museum. Seeing these in person is definitely a lot different than seeing the painting behind the screen. So some very nice work here as well. Again, just kind of a nice big overview picture of the ex exhibition space. Um, and we are located at 50, 45, I'm sorry, 4554 North Racine, um, right down the street from Truman College, actually. So if you are on campus or in the area, please feel free to stop by the museum and, and see this. Again, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you to all the artists that are here. We'll, we'll speak with you all here in just a second. Um, but this is a, a very nice, exhibition. Again, we're happy to have Truman back in person at the museum. Um, and this will be here until May 9th. And so it's a couple weeks, about a week, week or two. Um, so please feel free to stop by the museum in the meantime um, and check these out. Um, and now I'm going to transition back to my computer. So a few uh, moments of silence here. Uh, give me one second. All right, and here we are. <laughs> I think that was a uh, pretty seamless. I, I think I'm getting a little bit better at that. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed the virtual tour of the exhibition here uh, at the museum. Um, and please feel free to stop by anytime you're in the uptown area. Um, I do now want to uh, show the video that we saw on the computer part, the digital part of the exhibition. Um, and then we can also, you know, we'll take a look at the work. Um, we'll, I will ask a few questions uh, with, with the students and such that we see. Um, but then also there is that music aspect to it that we want to touch on as well. So Stephanie, if uh, you can go ahead and uh, share your screen and we will go ahead. We have a couple of questions or rather, uh, I have a couple of questions that I will kind of prompt each artist with and, and artists, if you are here, Again, please feel free to unmute yourselves um, when we uh, ask about your work. Great. 
Everybody can see it okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, Stephanie, I think you may have to unmute yourself to hear the hear the music. Okay. Can everybody hear it now? Yes. All right. We'll go ahead and we. We'll, um, Oh, well, we can just stop it, bring it back really quickly to Jordanka. Um, I do have a few just kind of short questions uh, for you. I um, you know we saw your work here in the space and, and thank you again for being able to um, provide some of that work for us. Um, Jordanka, um, what, I mean, you, you spoke about the Lake Michigan being a part of your creation what does the exhibition title Inside Out, what does that mean to you? Uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know that was the title of the, ex of the exhibit, um, um, Inside Out. Um, Stephanie, Inside Out. <laughs> Yeah, so I know um, I gave it that title simply because the work that you were all doing in person on campus since the beginning of the semester has been dealing with landscape, dealing with scenes of the outside world, scenes that we look out of our windows literally to, to see on almost a daily basis. And in the process of making work about those outside scenes were to some extent kind of internalizing them because it is our own interpretations of that external visual information that we're kind of processing that, you know, whatever comes out of our hands in our brushwork, in our drawing, in our watercolor, whatever it is in terms of the medium we're using is filtered through what's inside of us. So there is that kind of taking something that is outside, but internalizing it and then putting it back out there for the audience, right? So looking at something that is nature, but nature filtered through the hands of an artist is something that's going to have an additional component to it, you know, as opposed to just video or a straightforward photography of that same subject. Right. So the artist is interpreting it. They're putting their own stylistic kind of hand to it. They might be changing even the color palette. So lots of things that kind of contribute to the internalization of that subject matter and how how it how it is represented in the in the artwork. So that would be kind of my my take on the title. And the reason why I titled it that is that even though many of the works come from nature, so that's the outside. There are other subjects that other students are dealing with, which are also external representations, for example, in portraits. Some of our students did self-portraits or portraits of other people. Those are also outside representations of what the person looks like on the outside. But what an artist also brings to a portrait is something about the internal characteristics of that person, right? So the personality of that person, the soul of that person, or the feelings, the emotions that that person might be projecting, right? Those are all things that are internal, right? So you're you're bringing, you're kind of bringing those inside aspects out in your representation in the portrait as well. So there, there's kind of a broad application to to that title. No, that's that's. I beautiful. think it's a wonderful title because what you just described is exactly what we do. You know, we work from a photo, but it's how I see 
what I'm looking at, how I move the brush. And there are times when it's powerful. You're just moving it around because that's what it brings out of you looking at that photo. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is color. Sometimes I do like very soft, almost uh, watercolor colors, even though I'm working with oils. But I like oil specifically because I can express this um, strong, powerful image of whatever I'm looking at. So, yes, it's very much what's inside how I interpret what I'm looking at. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that resonated with you, you know, from not knowing what the title was to, you know, that really full, meaningful statement in less than two minutes. You know, I, I'm glad, you know, that that really stuck. Exactly. And I saw the flyer. It's a beautiful flyer mm -hmm. advertising. And I just did not remember the title, but I do want to stop by the gallery and actually see all of the uh, paintings together because I was getting only portions of the bigger photo. No, please. It please looked do. beautifully laid out. I, I really like how it's displayed. All Stephanie right there. <laughs> All right, so we can, uh, if we want to throw that video back on and then we can just uh, kind of go in, in the order of which the uh, paintings appear. But yes, please, Jordanka and, and anyone else, please visit us. Um, check us out right down the street from Truman again. Come see your beautiful work here. Great, so Carlos, you want me to play the video kind of in segments or you're gonna kind of stop at the artist's yeah, okay. let's do okay. that, yeah. Okay. And then at the end, we can probably play it full through or something. All right, so we have a work um, next, I believe, from Donatella. Mm -hmm. All right, Donatella, are you in the room, I believe? Yes, I'm here. Hello, good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm gonna put my camera on, but I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see me or not. <laughs> hello, yes, we can yes. see you, good morning, okay. hello, hello. Um, so when... I would, yeah, I would love to hear more just kind of about your work, about the process and, and what inspired you to create um, what it seems to be a portrait. Well, I had this picture um, of my sister that I wanted to paint for a while and um, we were doing portraits in class like we um, this was the second portrait painting that I did in this class um, and I decided to just do that pa painting of my sister um, because I don't know I just really like her expression in the picture and I like she's not really doing a lot with her face like she has a very subtle smile and I feel like that's kind of this that picture and this painting kind of to me expresses her personality like she's just kind of one of those people that is like mostly quiet but is very expressive with her face so it's like um even though she's not doing a lot with her face like you can still kind of see like there's a little bit of a smile there and like I don't know there's just something about the picture that it just makes me feel like there's something deeper and I guess also because I know my sister really well too, that definitely helped um, the painting process of like being able to have it really look like her because I know her face and like her features. So, yeah. When I saw this one, it was the eyes that really like drew me in. Just something about, again, I think it's her gaze and that it's mm -hmm. just everything, her, her face looks so like just soft and just like created so nicely, almost like, like there was like some sun shining on it. It's just like, highlight again what seems to very be a subtle a subtle emotion but there's definitely a very strong emotion there it's, it's very beautiful mm -hmm. very nice 
All right, thank you so much. And again, please, Donatella, come come see the work here in the space. I really want to now, now that I saw all of like the paintings that are in there, they're so pretty and nice. I want to go and see before um, the exhibit closes. Well, you are invited. Please, please stop by. Thank you so much for being a part um, yes. of the exhibition. I look forward to meeting you. Yes. Thank you for having me. Alex Shaw. Is Alex with us today? This looks familiar, this work, or maybe the name, I don't know. Yeah, Alex is not with us. And there's another Alex here who is also not with us today. Wow, these are amazing. And Maria is not with us today. Eliza is here. Yeah, that's mine. Hello, Eliza. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for being here and you know being a part of the exhibition at the Haitian American Museum of Chicago. Um, I would love to hear more about you as an artist. You know, who is this picture of, and and what inspired you to create this? Um, this was a portrait of actor Omar Ayuso. I chose this photo because I felt like there was harsh lighting and I needed more practice with that. It was kind of challenging. There's like a lot of details in the background and also in the, um, the details on his coat and stuff, but I thought that was what added to the fun of painting it as well. And I see something that really pops out to me is like the shadow work. You know, you can definitely tell there's a, a, a bright sun and even his, again, talking about emotion and facial features from um, um, Donatella, uh, you know, you can, you can see that that sun is, is there at present. And then the shadows that created kind of on her shirt um, are very masterful. I think it's great. And it almost looks like maybe like a, a field or such in the, in the back. And like you were mentioning the detail with that. Um, is, is on point. Um, you said this person, uh, this person's name, do you know this person personally or is this someone? No, I just found the photo while I was looking for like harsh lighting. This one stood out to me the most. Very interesting. So kind of a, a almost, if I may say like random, you know, picking of a, of a picture um, and then having this to really resonate with you uh, and kind of thinking about you know, Stephanie's uh, description of uh, Inside Out being the exhibition title, um, does anything resonate with you there, kind of with your painting and kind of its connection with, with the exhibition title as a whole? Um, I'm not sure, like... I can't think of anything. Sorry. Oh no, that no, that is that is definitely an answer because you know no is an answer as well for sure. I think one thing that came to my mind, Eliza, is because you were you were really focused on getting an image that had a strong sense of light and shadow, that the communication of the phenomenon of light in a painting is a difficult one to portray. And it's not something you can feel, you know, the, the painting is a representation of something physical, a, the feeling of warmth and the feeling of shadow, you know, and those two contrasting kind of feelings, representing that in a flat piece of paper is difficult to do. So I think tackling that technical challenge is one aspect of it, but it also does communicate the feeling of light you know, if we're outside and we're standing in the sun, we feel differently, probably warmer than if we're standing in the shadows completely, right? So I think that just that palpable sense of feeling something is, is, is captured to, to a strong degree in your, in your portrait. So I really like that. Very great work. And Eliza, congratulations on on creating the image and thank you for being a part of uh, the exhibition. Please come check, come check it out too. Please, please do. Thank you. Thanks.
All right, uh, Brianna, Brianna, Brianna. Let's see if they're in. I'm not seeing them in the room. I think Stephanie, I think you're trying to say you're on mute again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, Brie is in Paris right now, so there might be connective issues as well, or time change issues too. So I think she was hoping to be with us, but I don't see her now. So that is okay. Paris, uh, I wish we could all be there right now. That's that's really cool. Right. <laughs> and Mickey has is not with us. He has class at this time, so. Uh, that's really cool. That's wow. As is the case with Billy. Tina's work you have in the gallery. This is an additional piece that she did. I love the light, the sky. Wow. Mia is with us. Hi, Mia. Hello. Hold on. I'm just going to quickly try to turn my camera on. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Nice to see you. Hi. Good morning. Nice to see you too. Thank you uh, for uh, being a part of, of the exhibition here at the museum. I'd love to hear you know, more about yourself, your work, and, and what inspired you to create this piece. Yeah. So this is um, my close friend, Evelyn, and uh, our assignment was portraits. Um, and so, yeah, I got to, you know, I had her take a photo of herself with, you know, some nice lighting and everything. And um, I just worked on this and it was really enjoyable. I, I really enjoy painting portraits and I also like um, portraits for photography. So this was nice to do. And I don't know, I, I have like a, a slight fascination, I guess, with, you know, faces and everything. I think they tell a whole story, you know, on their own. So, yeah. And you've shown this to Evelyn? I have. I gave it to her actually. Okay. So, what did she say? What was her reaction seeing it? Did she? She knew you, you were creating this. She did. Yeah. I, I asked her. I was like, "Can you just, you know, set up a light and take a photo?" And she sent me a few. And she's like, "Is this okay?" I was like, yep. That's good. Um, but yeah, she really liked it. I, I've never, you know, painted her before. I've taken some like photographs for her, but yeah, never a painting. So it was exciting. Wow. And. You know, I, again, we were talking about emotion and then facial features. I think this too has kind of one of those very starking emotions that it is, it's very subtle. You know, all of these emotions that we've seen today kind of in the portraits are, are very subtle. Um, so this looks great, you know, and I, I'm glad to hear that you do kind of photography work, the portrait work kind of with, with this. Um, tell me about your photography portrait work. You know, what, what is that like? What do you like to do just kind of with, with the photos? You know, I, um, yeah, I've always just been drawn to taking portraits and I think it mostly has to do with the fact that um, there's just something about everyone. I mean, everyone has like their individual face and, and it's nice to be able to like capture a, a moment in time and specifically a person. And I think that like even this painting of Evelyn, like she's not really making a facial expression, but like it's still her and it's still her own story in a way. So. Um, I think it's the same with photog like photographs as well. Like you can look at a photo and it tells a story. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's, you know, a, a great a portrait that you picked. Um, tell Evelyn, she looks fantastic. <laughs> and definitely <laughs> you both should come check out the piece here digitally um, in the museum. Um, thank you for being a part of the exhibition and, and congratulations on, on the creation of your piece. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wow, these are incredible. And Maria is one of the artists on your wall as well. Lee, I don't 
Interesting, like technique. Wow. Samantha is here. Hello, Samantha. Hello, let me just turn on my camera. Hello. Good morning, it's nice to see you. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. Well, I would love to hear uh, about your work, uh, about you as an artist and, and kind of what put together cre the creation um, of, your, of your piece. Okay, so I mean, this is a painting of a uh, of my cat. So I'm always hanging out with him all the time, <laughs> and being at home from the pandemic, I'm always with him. So I wanted to paint a picture of him since I've never painted like a cat, an animal before. And since I love animals, uh, I painted him, and I also drew a couple of cats of my own with like inking, with like ink and stuff, and. I do a lot of like cartooning and like a lot of like <laughs> character designs and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to implement that um, on my painting since I really like the the combination of like uh, realism with like cartoonish kind of stuff. So I wanted to do that for this painting. I definitely have to ask now, what's your cat's name? Uh, his name is Bullet. I love it. That's so cute. That's and, and I, you know something that really resonates with me um, is is kind of art that comes out of the pandemic. You know, whether it be feelings or whether it be technique or just experimenting. Um, and some uh, the way we talk about it here at the museum, we've done some um, programs around this. But like art as healing. You know, when people were at home for months at a time. You know, sometimes you know just with families or you know just hanging out with with your pet you know, for literally two years, you know, kind of thing. Um, I think that it is very impactful then to create um, and have something come out of all of those kind of emotions and then feelings. And I think yeah, also so like your, your 3D, <laughs> your, your painting and your, and your mixed media. With yeah, painting. like I said, like I said, oh, sorry. But like I said, I liked uh, doing the combination of like, I always like looking at like combinations of like artwork and art styles and stuff. So, you know, I, I just think it's like unique and it's fun. And I love how, you know, again, the, the emotions and expressions on, on some of these cats faces. Mm -hmm. um, I, I keep on getting drawn to the one that, that looks like, you know, he's kind of angry, you know, kind of yelling, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's super cute. It's super cute. Do you have plans to, to get more cats? Do you want some more or just, just the one for Bullet? Um, right now, I'm fine with Bullet, but maybe in the future, like, I'll probably get more since I have a lot of experience with cats and stuff. They do make good pets. They they really do. And uh, you know, Samantha, thank you so much for for being a part um, of of the exhibition. Um, and like everyone else, please feel free to to come check it out here um, as it's it's rotating in the digital space um, in the museum. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Sarah is not with us today. I am. Well, you are. I am. I had a class, so I wasn't here for the first half. Oh, perfect. Great. Glad you could join us. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? Hi. It's nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Busy morning, but I appreciate you uh, you being here. 
Thanks. I'd love to hear um, about your work, about you, and, and what inspired you to create this piece. Um, I ended up calling this one Eftov because it's a zoomed in, uh, it's, it's a portrait of a zoomed in leftover sandwich. So like the sides are cut off. So like leftover, Eftov and the, so yeah, it was a leftover Thanksgiving turkey sandwich. So it's like bread with in between there's green beans, sweet potatoes, turkey, and cranberry sauce. So I can already yeah, taste it was it. kind of just experimenting <laughs> with uh, watercolor and acrylic together. Yeah, I can I can literally that the that resonates so hard with me, like, you know, leftover uh, Thanksgiving, literally everything that you can smash into one of those like dinner rolls or whatever the bread. Yeah. Um, and, and when I saw this piece at first, I was like, I have no idea. I, I could not, you know, see what it is. And so I had a, kind of all these abstract um, ideas that were going through my mind. Um, and you mentioned this was kind of a, an experiment with watercolor and acrylic. Talk to me about that. Why, what made you decide to, to do that? And do you prefer one over the other? Um, I've worked with acrylic for much longer and I really like solid coloring, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to experiment a little more with giving some different shading to, with a watercolor because I'm not as good at getting, you know, getting the uh, tone I want with the colors you know, whether it being looking washed out or solid. Um, yeah, and I, I guess uh, the freedom of watercolor wanted, I wanted to try to do some freedom of watercolor and then that kind of just turned to abstract, which is why I like doing like super close-ups of stuff, like flowers or something, because it can, it doesn't have to be perfect and it can, it goes to a neat abstract place so well. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed how like the watercolor on the turkey, the pink part, like worked out with uh, the acrylics. Because part of it was like, it wasn't, it, it kind of just expanded the color palette a little. I'm not great at mixing colors, but uh, yeah, it was, I guess a little more concept and I wasn't my personally I wasn't like I didn't think it was too successful technique wise but uh I like where it went conceptually I definitely think I can already see like a full series of, of paintings you know something like this like you said close up because it, you, it kind of makes it that abstraction it makes people like what is this um I love that concept I love the idea and I hope that you continue with that uh, in some kind of way, shape, or form, continue that experimentation because um, I think that could create a, a beautiful body of work. Really could. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being a part um, of the exhibition. And again, please come see us right down the road from Truman. Um, and I definitely, I, I challenge you to, to think about and go along with this concept. I think it's really interesting. Um, the colors, the technique, the palette, you know, I, I think it's really nice. So, so thank you for, for creating this. Um, and hopefully we will meet soon. Thanks. Sandy, I don't believe is with us today. Uh, I think Marina is here. I am here. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for, for being here. Um, and like everyone else, I would like to, you know, just know about you, your, you as an artist, you know, your technique, um, what, what uh, inspired you to create this piece? Um, so my inspiration was finding something natural from the earth to paint. And for our specific class period, we just had to paint um, a photo of a plant. Um, and to me, cactuses are very much unique um, and a very interesting subject matter in nature to paint. So I found as a challenge to accomplish painting it. Um, yeah, I just, I love cactuses. They're just very like unique and not like every other plant. 
I've never actually seen one in person to be, I mean, you know, like the, the ones in like the desert, I guess, naturally, like I've seen them at the plant store. <laughs> um, right. and, and again, something like this, it took me a little bit of time. This is, you know, I have a, a list of things that like, I don't know what this was. Um, this one took me a little bit of time because I, I, I don't know why I couldn't figure it out um, what it was. And kind of thinking about that, that natural aspect, you know, the, the outside in, um, how does that resonate with you? Um, with kind of thinking about natural subjects for your work? Um, so to me, the term like inside out, I guess means to bring the inner surface of a subject to light. So for my painting, I just brought some of the inner dimensions and like the basic beauty, I guess, of a cactus to view. So like, I guess, for example, like when I was drawing like the needle sticking out of the cactus, I added a little bit of highlights to bring out the dimension of that. So that's, that's just one part of the inside out term that can be used for my painting. Yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's, and I'm looking at it um, and I have to go look at it now, even on the screen a little bit more, the highlights, like you see, you can see the roundness of the plant, um, the vibrancy of, of, the, of the flowers. Um, it's, it's very beautiful. And I think it's a, it's a great creation. Thank you for, for being a part of the exhibition and, and please, Come, come check it out here um, at the museum when you have a chance. Thank you, I definitely will. Yes, thanks. I don't think we have my mind with us. Nicole is here. Yes, hello, Beyond Turn up with you, um, Hi. Good morning, Nicole. How are you? I'm good. Uh, good. It's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, I would love to learn more about you as an artist, um, your inspiration um, of creating uh, this piece for the exhibition. Um, well, this specific picture was it's not just that big. I can't pronounce it in some place. Um, it's not basically like a baby thing. Um, so I just really enjoy going about my house and just finding things to pay. And so half of it is just some of my little knickknacks, and the other half is some of, some of my grandfather's old days. So it was just really cool to be able to put them together and just see them. I think that's great. You know, you're talking about your grandfather's items, your own items, um, a very kind of uh, nostalgic, I guess you could say, uh, image. Uh, and, you know, I think it being here and on the screen, I, I noticed on the screen kind of like, I, I really was drawn to your kind of the blue gray tones of, of what I'm assuming is um, that, that game. Um, it's, it's very beautiful. And what um, kind of- the abacus? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like for, for math. Oh, it's for math. It's like what people use for calculators before the word calculators. Oh, I did I did not even know that. I I would have not even thought that's what it was. Huh. Yeah, I don't know how to use it, but I just have it. Yeah. About to say, I might have to have to look that one up because yeah, I, I've never now now I'm thinking about it in such a different way, you know, because um I think it's uh yeah, I, I don't I don't know how someone would use that, but it's it's a very very beautiful painting, and it's looking just like in the chat. That oh okay, so there was a, a specific assignment that this one was for. What was that assignment? Okay, oh, I really can't put that Oh, I don't want to try. <laughs> I I can't either. <laughs> it was the assignment <clears throat> since I assigned it. I'll speak. <laughs> It's, it was a trompe l'oeil assignment, and trompe l'oeil is the French term for tricking the eye. So students were tasked with 
finding objects that have some three dimensionality to them, but then painting those objects um, in their, on their flat surface of a watercolor paper to create that three dimensional illusion that what you're really looking at is the real objects as opposed to a painting of them. So we're kind of tricking the eye of the viewer to make them think that they're really looking at an abacus or a, a, a booklet about plants. So instead of looking at a painting, we're supposed to kind of make that viewer think that we're really looking at those objects themselves in the painting. Oh my gosh, wow. I, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And now, you know, it really does look with the dimensionality um, of and, and the highlights of the different aspects of the of the piece. Um, Nicole, very great work and a beautiful piece. Thank you for for sharing your thoughts on it. And again, please come see it here in the museum um, whenever you have the opportunity to. Thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank today. you for that Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I believe Olivia is here. Yes, I'm here. Hey, Olivia, how are you? I am good. Good, good. I would love to hear about you as an artist, your your inspiration um, in creating this work. Um, well, I've never really been a fan of painting portraits, but it was an assignment for this one. So I did a portrait of my friend Lucy and um, I chose her because she has this very um, like signature look she does in pictures and it's kind of like the offside glance and it's very dramatic. So I thought that would be a good one, but yeah. Yes, and have you shown her the, the painting? Yes, I showed it to her and her mom and her mom wants me to frame it for her. So I'm working on that right now. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> From something that you don't like to do so much to having it framed on someone's wall. I would say yeah. that's, a, that's a huge success. <laughs> and here at the museum now too. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. That's great. And I think also, you know, again, just bringing it back to that emotion piece to that kind of facial expressions, um, how, how faces really do tell a story here. Um, and I think something that I was really drawn to um, was kind of that side glance, you know, like, you know, everyone has that look, that, that side look. So I was, I was very interested in the emotion um, that, that came out of this one. Um, and I think also another thing was the color palette, you know, very, just like very almost mute, muted, um, but with that facial expression had, had a lot going on there. Um, Thank you. It looks very nice. And, and you know, congratulations on, on creating the work. Um, and I invite you again to, to come to the museum and then check it out. It's a huge accomplishment to be a part of the exhibit. Um, and thank you for, for, being, for being present, talking about it and uh, being here in our space. Thank you. I'll definitely try and stop by. <laughs> Please do. And I think Lila is here. Oh, maybe Lila, are you here? I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing that. Maybe not. Okay. Don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> okay. All right, and I think this is a great place too that speaks about uh, the music. Um, Stephanie, if you could just talk about the, the original piece that was created uh, for this slideshow. Yeah, so Professor Rich Keitel is one of our music faculty at Truman. He teaches music, music appreciation, but also music theory courses and keyboarding. So if you're interested in taking music classes, there's, you know, several that you can choose from. But his piece that he wrote for us was actually just a direct kind of musical response to a collection of work. So he really looked at the pieces and took 
his inspiration from what you guys created visually and then use that to inform what he did with sound. So he really feels like the soundtrack that he provided us is kind of the musical equivalent or musical response to the overall kind of feeling, the mood, the you know, and, and just the kind of sensory information that you that you get from from looking at the artwork. So it kind of comes together in a really interesting and, and cool way. And he's done that for us once before. So we started doing this combination of this student artwork and the slideshow with the music soundtrack. We did that for the first time last, last semester. And it was so compelling to be looking at something visual, but to also have another sense engaged as we were looking at it that really was directly connected to the work. So that, you know, we, we thank him. He's, he's attending a family funeral today, unfortunately, so he's not with us. But yeah, our, our condolences and our gratitude for Professor Keitel. It's, it's a great piece and, and I love the, the background to it as well, just adding that additional layer, having the auditory um, portion of it. So yes, thank you, Professor, we appreciate that. All right, well, I do um, just want to make some space quickly. If there are any kind of last comments um, from the artists or any questions from artist to artist that um, may have come up as we kind of end the, end the talk. And feel free to put something in the chat too if you want to do it that way. I have no issue to relay the messages. Carlos, one question I had for you is if you had something to relate to the students about the, the cultural artifacts that you have from Haiti and from that, that diaspora that you might want to, to educate us about a little bit for our last couple of minutes, if that, if that works. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and I'm just seeing in the chat really quickly, Nicole, thank you for being here. And yes, all of the, all the work today was so beautiful and congratulations to all of you um, on um, being a part of the exhibit. Um, in terms of kind of cultural artifacts and a little bit about the museum. So um, our artifacts and our collection is about 500 pieces. Um, and that doesn't include the photographs. We have tons and tons of, of photographs. Um, and a lot of them, I would say about 80% of them are donated items. So we don't necessarily buy or, or sell um, stuff that's in our collection. Rather, there are different families that have heirlooms or things that have just been passed down. Um, a lot of the times, you know, folks are downsizing or moving. Um, they know that they have something that's Haitian related, um, but not necessarily something that they want to move or take with them or have any kind of reason to hold on to. So they, they find and, and look up, you know, places to donate. A lot of the times if you're here in Chicago, you put in Haiti or Haitian, we're one of the first or the first ones to, to pop up. And so pieces kind of come to us in, in that way. Um, in terms of kind of the, the diversity, the cultural diversity and diaspora, um, we definitely uh, see pieces that people donate that aren't necessarily Haitian, but have kind of, uh, for example, a vodou or like kind of religious tie to it. Um, I think that too is, is a very strong piece of Haitian culture and society um, that has a lot more connections than, than people may think. Um, the, the religious aspect, you know, you can see the building of altars and um, celebration of life and celebration of different um, aspects, you know, seen in not only Haitian Vodou, but for example, Dias de los Muertos um, for kind of Hispanic culture and, um, you know, even within the kind of more Christianity aspect to practice uh, Vodou and, and to be Christian kind of go, they go hand in hand or again, a lot more connections than people may think. Um, and here at the museum, we do have an open door policy. So anyone who wants to learn about Haiti, Haitian society, whether it be Haitian or non-Haitian, um, they're invited into our space um, because we really do a fantastic job, I think, of, of giving a well-rounded view of what Haiti is, um, trying to change the narrative of what kind of people know about Haiti. Um, but 
at the end of the day, it's all about education and education being at our core, making sure that we're representing and, and sharing our story, sharing our experiences um, so that others um, may learn um, and others may take in kind of that, that new cultural aspect um, as they're here in the museum in our space. And adding the temporary exhibit, adding more voices, more um, different people being represented in a museum um, is, is super important to us. So we're, we're very happy to be that platform um, for Haitian, Haitian American, Chicago artists. Again, a lot of them showcasing their pieces and their work in, the, in a museum um, for the first time ever. Thank so, you, that's great. Yeah, the museum, again, we're, we're here, 4654 North Racine, right down the street from Truman. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. And again, thank you, uh, Stephanie, for um, coming in, curating the space, you know, for, for being a, a partner with the museum. Um, thank you to, to all the artists that were here today and the ones that weren't. Um, you know, we're very excited to, again, have more voices um, in the museum being represented um, being that platform. And I think this is a fantastic uh, and well thought out exhibition. So congratulations to you all. Um, and thank you for, for being here today. Um, very quickly, just some museum last minute things I wanna let you all know about. Um, in May, um, the whole month is actually Haitian Heritage Month. And because we're a Haitian specific cultural institution, um, we have a huge lineup of different programs and events happening. A lot of them still virtual uh, to keep people safe and healthy. And I want to invite you all to um, all of those. Um, more information will be going out about that later this week into the first of the month. Um, so keep an eye on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, lots of exciting things um, about to happen. And again, please come visit us. Uh, we're open Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, bring your friends to see the work and your accomplishments here at the museum because it truly is um, something special. Um, but other than that, um, Stephanie, I don't know if there's, there's anything else uh, that you have for, for the students or for our audience today. Nothing other than congratulations again. Thank you so much for participating specifically today with this discussion. I think making work is one thing, but I think talking about what it means specifically to each artist is really important as well. And I, I think that is another component of the art world that, that is, is very valuable. So thank you for providing that platform today, Carlos, appreciate it. Yes, thank you all. Um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and the week ahead. Um, and thank you for being a part of a, of a program here at the Haitian American Museum of Chicago. We hope to see you again very soon here in person um, or virtually at another event. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, have a great day. Thank you.